and then you were allowed you were allowed ten thousand. So that you were, if the gun was seven thirty nine, it it was at its limit for, to be able, to be sold. If you sold it any larger, and it was larger than seven thirty nine, you're liable. See? Now, so you've got to know all all these proof marks now. Under the 1925 rules of proof, 729 would be marked 12. If it's marked 12, then that would be the size of the bore, and you were allowed 10 thousandths, and then it, it, it would be 729 to 739. Then if it reached 740, then the gun should be marked, if it's still valid, 12 over 1. Now, a 12 gauge gun, this is all really complicated, I can tell you. A 12 gauge gun can measure anywhere from 0.710 to 751 and still be a 12 gauge. You see, the, it has nothing to do with the, with the, with the, the with the cartridges you fire at it. If it's 12 gauge, it takes a 12 gauge cartridge, but it can be anywhere between these, these two sizes. Now under the 1925 rules of proof, a, a gun would, could be marked 13, 13 over one, 12, so, that's right, 12, and then 12 over one like that and then that 12 over 1 would re when it reached 751 because a 12 over 1 is 740 to 751 when it reached 751 you're up to the next size you're up, you've reached 11 gauge so they won't proof test them bigger a uh, 12 gauge any bigger than 7 uh, when it gets any bigger than 71, 751, because that is 11 gauge. Does this, does this make, make sense to you guys? But um, it's complicated, but once you get into measuring bores and all that, you've got to know all this stuff. Uh, but it doesn't matter here if, someone's, if, if someone has a gun and the, the barrels have been enlarged and they're very, very thin and dangerous. It doesn't really matter, you, you, you could repair it, but beware, if you're the last guy who repairs the gun, I mean, either refuse to, well, refuse to repair it, or if you do repair it, get the guy to sign something. That you're telling him the gun's dangerous, and just in case something happens. But, and as I say, they, nowadays in, in, the, in England, they have this 1989 rules of proof which apply all over Europe. Now, another thing, while we're on rules of proof, another thing is, if you lengthen chambers, now a lot of, there's a lot of guns knock it running around in, that are of two and a half inch chambers because two and a half inch was the most common size of shell or cartridge used in England was two, it was two and a half and, and parts of Europe. Now if some, somebody comes along to you and says, I want the chambers lengthened to two and three quarter, you are in actual fact invalidating the proof marks that are on the barrels because if you lengthen the chambers at all, you invalidate the proof marks. If you the, in England or Europe, if you lengthen the chambers, the gun should be reproof tested at one of the official proof houses. Uh, here, I've seen guns that had two and a half inch chambers lengthened to three inch. Now, let me explain the big di the difference between two and a half and three inch. Now, the service pressure of a the service pressure of a two and a half inch shell at one inch from breech face is three t 
tons per square inch. Square inch. That's the trans chamber pressure at one at one inch from the breach face. Now, a three inch a three inch cartridge is three and a half tons per square inch. So you're jumping up a half a ton extra pressure on the, in the chamber. You don't know whether the gun will stand it or not, you see. It hasn't been tested for it. So it's unwise to open a gun up from two and a half to three inch because you're, you're dealing with the unknown, you see. That's it. Now, another thing is, now smaller gauges like a 410, are even more terrible than that. Now think about this. Um, a two and a half, two and a half inch 410 cartridge is three tons per square inch at one inch from the reach face. Now a three inch 410 is five tons per square inch at the, at one inch from the breech face. A big difference in that little 410. So that's where you have to be careful, really careful, with the small gauges. You can get away with more with the bigger gauges, but with a 410, don't do it. If you go, if, you, if somebody comes on with a, with a 410 that's only two and a half inches and say, chamber it for three inch, uh -oh, I ain't doing that. Be careful, because that, that, that's the big difference. Now, another thing too is, where's my rubber gun? Oh, there we are. Uh, another big thing is, another one of the rules over there on the um, proof is, if you convert a gun from non-ejector or eject or extractor as they call it over here to ejector and you open up the extractor hole and you've got the the bar barrels like this it was in the the lump and the extractor hole here now with the with an ejector gun this hole is usually a quarter inch diameter now and then with a non-ejector or extractor gun, this hole can be 332, maybe even eighth on some. Well, if you open this hole, you're weakening the distance between the two chambers there, there and there, and the distance, you're weakening this, dis shortening this distance between these two corner, corner of the lump and the hole. So, you're in actual fact weakening the area. Now that, according to the UK or Europe, set, it demands reproof. You've got to have the gun reproved if you open that hole. Uh, because you're weakening it, it could crack through there. Um, now another thing over there, screwing chokes have to be proof tested. Now, here, there's nothing like that at all. But a gun uh, that has screwing chokes, has to, when the chokes are fitted, it has to be proof tested. At one time, there was only the old, good old-fashioned cuts compensator, which screwed on the end of the barrel. Those things had to be proof tested. Now, since they brought in the, the I think it's an American invention, the screwing chokes, but I think one of the early ones is Briley. Since they brought those in, the Europeans are fitting them, the Brits are fitting them, and they, the proof house has decided they, they must be proof tested. Mm -hmm.